Hey, 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 it's Grips, and as always, thanks for joining me today. All right, I got an email from a lady called Brent, and she wanted to know how to use the magnifying filter in the new blue from Video Studio 8. All right, Brent, here you go. And for all those watching, uh, I'll show you how to use the new magnifying glass, which is really, really simple. So uh, you saw the intro and you saw what it can do. So quite often I see some documentaries and they have a document and they try to zoom in on a paragraph to emphasize something about their paragraph. So let's kind of copy that. So let's go into the FX filters. So you go in the new blue essential four and then you grab the magnifying glass, drop it onto your timeline or your footage, I should say. You double click and then you launch the customs filter. All right, now thanks to some cool tech he also reminded me that if I uncheck this, I don't need to do the copy and paste on my keyframes, which you see me do all the time. So that's kind of cool. Thanks for reminding me. But unfortunately, in this tutorial, we will be using the keyframes. So let's. Uh... But first, before I do that, I'm going to basically turn everything off. <laughs> that's right, everything off. I might leave, might leave a little bit of a border. All right. The interface is really simple. If, been, if you've been using any new blue filter, they're all the same. This is your placement. So if I use this little square, I can basically place the magnifying anywhere I wish on the document. Uh, shape. you got presets here, but I would just ignore it probably. And then just use the shape here. So rectangle. And again, we will then place it over somewhere near a paragraph. And over here, I've got my size and aspect ratio. So I'm going to decrease the size slightly and then change the aspect ratio from a square more into a rectangle like so. All right, so I'm pretty well set up here. Now your border is quite simple. You can choose the color, the width and the feather. So the feather just gives it a bit more of a, a blur effect on the edges, so it softens it a bit for you. But I like the hard edges. It looks kind of cool. All right, and the width. Now I'm gonna leave it more of a pinstripe, but I've also noticed as I increase the magnification, the pinstripe also again gets increased. All right, so what I did here is you'll see a lot of empty space on the left and on the right, but fear not, as I magnify, that will be all taken up. As you can see, it more or less just zooms in, and that is enough for me, okay? So what I mean with the keyframes, if you're happy with this, so let's say it will now not change anything. If you're happy with this, you may leave it the way it is. But when you saw my intro, I kind of went, as the, as the timeline came along, it popped up. So that's where I use my keyframe. So if you do want that effect, you will need to go into your very first keyframe. The best thing to do is just click on this, or toggle onto this little switch here, and then click on the use keyframes. And again, we'll have to use the old control C, <laughs> right? So I'm going to go along my timeline, or say anywhere where I think, well, this is where I'm talking about it. I could be doing a voiceover. I'm going to control V. So this is where I actually want the magnification to happen. So I'm going to go back to the original keyframe and I'm going to turn everything off because I don't want any magnification here. So as I move along the, the timeline, you'll see that it now starts to magnify and do its business right now this is going from this keyframe to this keyframe so all the settings in here it's going to over the period of this timeline is going to greet or meet those settings right so if you don't want that if you just want it to go from static to immediately zoom well then what you need to do is do this control c move your cursor or your current time indicator along the timeline to about where you think you want it to pop up and then you control v so what you're going to have a complete static, nothing's going to happen. And then once it hits past this keyframe, it's going to meet all the demands and settings from this keyframe. So like so, and then voila, there it is. So let's just play that so you can see it. And there you go. And if you want it to zen, zoom back out, then what you need to do is take these two keyframes and drop it along a timeline here, but in reverse. Okay, so this keyframe first and then this keyframe second, copy and paste copy and paste. All right, let's press OK. And then we'll see the document like so. All right. Now, all I did uh, after that, I just simply added a pan and zoom filter just to really emphasize it even further. So um, we'll grab the pan and zoom filter. And then what happens is not only do I zoom in on the text, I also then zoom in on the document like so. 
And if you don't like to zoom it like that, well then it's just a matter of going customize and then play around with the settings in the pan and zoom filter. And again, they also work on keyframes. But this is not a tutorial on pan and zoom. It just shows you what I did. So there you go. And that gives it a pretty good effect on whatever it is that you're trying to demonstrate. All right, let's keep moving. Uh, you also saw I did the one with the video. So let's do the video one. It's, it's, uh, it's identical. It really is. So again, I've just might... Um, let's grab the filter first. Uh, new blue essential four, drop it on the timeline, and then go straight into the customs filter. And this time I might leave it as an oval. So I'm going to turn down the magnification and I might uh, go over to here because I'm doing a tutorial. I'm trying to get people to follow me. I'm going to shrink it slightly because it's really, really big. There you go. And then drop that down a bit as well. So the border is not so thick. So here we go, I might just then increase the magnification and that to me I'm quite happy with. I uh, forgot to turn off the keyframe and as you can see it defaulted back to zero. So a good idea is to turn it off first if you're not planning to use keyframes. But again, I'm using keyframes so it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's a nice save. I, I, I screwed up royally and made myself look good at the end. Or did I? Anyway. Uh, so if I move my current time indicator to the back, you'll see that it goes back to the original position where I started off with. But like I said before, you can do control C and then you can bring it right to the beginning and then control V and it'll do exactly what you want it to do. So there you go. So in essence, the magnified class, magnifying glass is really, really simple to use. It's just a matter of if you want it to animate, use the keyframes. If you don't, set your settings and then go from there. And then it's just a matter of what it is that you're trying to highlight on your project. Now the Corel video has a really good screen capture. So uh, it, it has a good frame rate. It has a good uh, uh, rendering program. The only thing I find with the screen capture is it's got really lousy post options. It doesn't give you a lot. It gives you the pan and zoom filter, the crop filter. But now with the magnification filter, you may be able to enhance your project even further and push out some really cool tutorials. So there you go, Brent. I hope I didn't speak too fast and I lost you along the way. But this is how we apply the magnification to our projects. And as always, thanks for watching.